Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from a little old guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, Radio for the Soul, and the Transformation Station. A couple of announcements. Swamji Visva Yogi, God Realized Man from India, is going to be back in town next week. And boy, am I on fire for that interview. When you're around the presence of a divinely illumined individual, my guest tonight will tell you what that's like. So Swamji Visva Yoga, we're going to be doing a video interview, and then we're going to be posting that to uh, Center of Light Radio. So hang in tight for more details about that coming really soon. If you hear a big rumbling in the background of my voice, I live near an industrial train station, and right now they seem to be hyper busy. <laughs> um, also, if you want to call into the show today, dial 888-919-2355, Nine one nine two three five five. A couple of adverts, real quick. If you're looking for any uh, a speaker, I do speaking engagements. I have been doing it all of my life, as I do with Center of Light Radio as well. But I do life changing presentations on avatars, divine beings, uh, UFOs, my personal experience with extraterrestrials. God, for many, many years, and hopefully still, I'm trying to get Nucleus 8, my alien-human hybrid friend who lives on a planetary station 27,000 light years away, on Center of Light Radio, and of course, that's going to have to be a pre-recorded show because we don't want him to be located and targeted. He happens to be head of security for this quadrant of our galaxy. Believe it. And one night when we are able to do this show, um, we're going to talk about Many of the things he's done to me, through me, in front of me, and I can't even begin to count the the far out, far in experiences that I've had with heroic nucleus eight. Also, I do spiritual coaching. I don't, I don't like to approach it from the psychic point of view. That is not my gig. I like helping you get clear. Also, if you have spiritual squatters in your house, dark entities, and you want them gone, I come with an arsenal. A powerful arsenal of information as well as images that you uh, adhere to and you put into practice the things I will be handing to you. We're going to elevate the vibration of your house and your house will become the peaceful home that you've intended to be. And I will not leave you until we achieve our objective of just that. You can send me an email at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com to let me know the services you are needing. And finally, um, Center of Light Radio website is changing. Uh, we have a new sign-in form, a new subscription form. I'm, I'm providing lots of free stuff. Make sure you fill that thing out. And also, along with that free stuff, you have access to my newsletter program. Now it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio business. My guest today is Jason Quit. Jason was on the show recent, recently, and we talked about his interdimensional time traveling. Today's going to be a little different. Jason would be considered a lifelong experiencer who has interacted with the multidimensional world. Since an early age, Jason has been awakened to things that are outside of the normal range of perception of just the physical world. He has had many out-of-body experiences and has encountered ghosts, aliens, and other dimensional beings. He had been taken out of the body time travel journeys and has remembered many of his past lives. With the anniversary of 9-11 today, mm, that just touches a very sensitive place in probably most of the world's heart, collective heart. Ongoing wars, North Korea, and very recent hurricanes hitting the United States. How do we continue to stand strong so we may hold our light in this chaotic world? Jason is going to discuss his personal experiences and what he has learned from his lifetime of studying, teaching, and practicing many modalities of energy medicine, shamanic journeys, and qigong. When we go through traumas, personal or collective, we lose a piece of ourselves to that wound. Through healing, we can reclaim that missing piece so we can stand in our power again. And you can find more about this phenomenal guest on Center of Light Radio, and he's really kicking butt in the field of spirituality all over the world. Uh, you can find him more at www.thecrystalsun.com. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Mr. Jason Quit. Well, thank you for having me again, Keith. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. 
And yes, it's, you know, it's the anniversary of 9-11. And I think we've been uh, living in a perpetual state of terror ever since. <laughs> there's been constant war. Um, there's been constant trauma going up all over the world. And it's almost like we're living with this stress uh, within us on a day-to-day -day basis. And not only that is we can't escape it. If we turn on the TV, if we pick up a newspaper, or even if we go to a coffee shop with friends, um, usually the topics um, surround some pretty awful things that are going on around the world um, ever since this anniversary of 9-11. And I would say that this is not very uncommon. I think we've been going through this even before 9-11, but since um, it's the anniversary today, and you know, so many people's lives were changed on that day. And I think everybody, it's one of those moments in your life where where were you on that day? You know, how did you know? How did you experience it? And how did you feel? And I remember when I don't even know how I got the message, it's almost like it was just already on the TV, everybody was already watching it. And it, we watched it unfold live on TV, which I think is, is a first. So we had millions and millions of people around the world literally glued to their television, watching uh, a trauma happening. So basically, we're getting inflicted trauma just by merely watching it on the TV. And I think ever since then, we've been walking with a wound all of us, and it hasn't gone away. Uh, we haven't really let go and healed what has happened and what the outcomes of this chaos has done to us as a people, as a community, and as a state. Um, and actually, I was just, I, I just spent the last month um, down in the States. In fact, I was very close to you. I, was, I spent uh, a couple weeks in Tennessee and North Carolina, and then we went down to Florida. And um, many people don't know this, but every single year of my life, I basically have gone down to Florida. Uh, my grandparents were down there. <laughs> and so ever since I was a baby, I would be down in Florida every single year. And I just spent um, two and a half incredible weeks uh, down in Florida in August. And you know, just to hear that there's a hurricane, just to hear that there's going to be a natural disaster there, um, it gets your heart pounding because it's almost like that's your home and you feel like you're being affected by that. So um, luckily, you know, we uh, left just in time. But, um, you know, I really want to go back there fast just to kind of see what has happened and if everything's okay where we stay down there. So there's been a lot going on recently. Um, and even with uh, North Korea and the stresses with uh, North Korea firing missiles towards Japan or over Japan, um, I spend a couple months of my life every single year in Japan. And I'm going there very shortly again. So I could see right now this is affecting you and your energy. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It, it, my, myself, just talking about this, Jason, it makes me I'm, I'm becoming emotional. You know, what's what's happened, what happened in Houston now in Florida, the, the anniversary of 9-11. It's like it's hard to contain all this in a wounded heart. It's like I, I want to explode out of being pissed off. Uh, I want to explode my compassion to do something about all these events that are just taking place. Some of them, as you mentioned, are natural. And some of them, though we're not going to go political, I think most of the people realize, and that's what makes it hurt even more, that some of this stuff is fabricated. I'll just say that um, Nikola Tesla, over 100 years ago, invented technology to control the weather. And he demonstrated this. Uh, there's even newspaper articles written that he would end all uh, naval he would end all naval warfare because he had devices that can create um, tsunamis in the middle of the ocean that can wipe out um, any ship, any airplane that would come from overseas. He can create um, hurricane winds. 
And this is over 100 years ago, and it was demonstrated. So if this technology existed back then, just think of what they have today. So when you sit back and you watch such a traumatic uh, weather uh, system come in, you know that they do have the technology to actually increase it or decrease it. And it just has to do with which type of frequencies are being broadcast uh, in the upper atmosphere. It's all it takes. So, you know, I, I kind of always go back to uh, the Shakespeare quote that um, all the world's a stage and we are merely players. <laughs> And we are, we're, we're basically being pulled in all directions by our emotions. And we are affected emotionally. You know, they, someone can say, oh, you're not, you know, spiritually enlightened enough because you're still feeling emotions. I think it's the complete opposite. I think it's totally. the emotions that make us who we are. And then we need to feel those emotions to navigate this world. That's what life is. You know, so it's not something that we could push away. But the thing that is really um, messed up about all of this is the amount of fear. In fact, you know, if we're historians and we look back at this time period of our lives, um, you know, from the beginning of uh, 2000, this would be known as the time of terror. You know, we're fighting wars everywhere. We're, um, you know, we're constantly being shown graphic things of how this world. I mean, there's fires on the other side of the U.S. right now, you know, flooding on the other side. So we're going through some pretty traumatic stuff. And it's this fear, this uh, terror that we've been holding with us that is actually um, affecting us at a very deep spiritual level. Jason, do you do you also think that. Because of the fires, because of the hurricanes, we can sit here and all we want and blame and point finger at the powers that be if they are fabricating this stuff. But really, to get back to our personal power, mm -hmm. it's to see that regardless of they or whoever or no one ever is doing, the fact that these events are happening or a mirror image of the collective that is being squeezed out of us by the divine who's wanting to clear up all this smog and that's choking the human heart so we can dissipate it so we can get on with our anchoring heaven on earth prophecy life yeah well it's the great mirror okay. <laughs> we are the great mirror so everything that we hold and we're not talking just about personal we're talking about collective as a human species uh what we hold within us is reflective in our environment and how uh, events will unfold, uh, not only in our own personal lives, but in, um, I would say, the future of the race. Now, you know, we've been um, getting a little crazy recently. I mean, you know, even in the UFO uh, conspiracy world, it, this past couple of years has kind of been a little insane. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, feelings being hurt. There's a lot of people outing people and um, even uh, politically, you know, with Trump and North Korea and, you know, uh, just the uh, economics of all of this, um, our minds are going to some dark places. And because of that, we're actually pulling out this dark stuff that we hold within us. So um, remember, we could put up a shield around us all the time and we can say, you know, we're into love and light and we carry this light within us, which we do. You know, it's our natural state. But we can't ignore what the world is showing us. We can't push it away. You know, because if we do that, then we're not looking at our wounds. And our wounds are being shown right in front of us all the time and they're being poked all the time. So, like you said, just by talking about uh, these events earlier, you kind of feel, you still feel like you're being choked up. You still feel that connection to what's going on. And it's because it's still a part of us. It's not like we've let it go. And the problem that I find with, with fear, first of all, fear is very, very important. It is our primal uh, survival instinct. So a couple thousand years ago, if you were in a jungle and a predator is coming after you, 
you better feel fear because that's going to save your life. So uh, what fear does is it kind of um, hones us in to get something done. It motivates us to get something done very quickly, you know, or else, you know, it could be our life on the line. But now, because we live, um, I'll say, very cushy lives <laughs> in nice places, um, that fear is, is used to control us. And when you're in fear, you're in stress. Your organs are in stress. Your mind is in stress. Everything is in stress. And because of that, you start to lose your memory. You start to um, not retain things. So instead of focusing on the greater good or love and light or focusing on um, the questions of life, we're just focused on got to get this done. No, there's not enough time. We're all stressed. We're all busy. We got to get moving. And if we, keep, if we keep the human population stressed and in a fear state, um, it's extremely easy to push them in any direction that you want. So, you know, the whole reason why we came on today um, on this anniversary was really to talk about in these type of times, how do we stay grounded? How do we let it go? How do we walk and stay in our truth and carry our power? when uh, basically things fall apart around us. And, you know, I think this is just the natural flow, even though it may be unnatural where someone might be manipulating something, it's still a natural flow of chaos. And, um, you know, we can say that this is extremely evil. This is really bad things. But, if everything was perfect in this world, we would cease to grow. And then there would be no point in even incarnating here. Right. Because, you know, if you think that, you know, your goal is almost like a heaven on earth where everything is manifest and you sit down and you know everything, you're all knowing, you can manifest everything and have everything. Um, Give that a couple weeks and see how much you like life. You know, that kind of reminds me <laughs> of a Twilight Zone episode when the guy died and he had this nice penthouse, whatever. He had gorgeous women. He had you know, a pool table and every time he would hit the pool balls, they would all go in all at once. He had everything. He had this heaven kind of reality. And the, the agent, the assistant that was helping him, his name was Pip. He called him and said, you know, take me out of here. I want to go to the other place. He says, you are in the other place. <laughs> right? I totally agree. So if we have everything the way we want it all the time, what next? It's like someone said, you know, if you believe in Jesus that you die, you're going to sit with Jesus on the park bench. What next? What do we do? I mean, do, do we work and do we play? I mean, totally agreed. It would get pretty boring pretty quick. And I think it comes back to this whole idea of we are part of a, something called a co-creation. So we are a spark of, div of the divine living in a co-creation. It's through our creativity that we can change the timelines, that we can change ourselves. And our new experiences that we build here uh, will be brought back to the source to grow that energy. You know, so yes, we're, um, let's say, uh, predestined. So we live a life where we're guided on a certain path. But during that path, we have the will of free choice, where we can make decisions, we can be creative, and we can manifest something very interesting and special here. And I know yourself as a musician, you know, when you play, you know, there's something about music, there's something about creativity, or even art, to produce something using your divine will into this world. Um, it's, it's very, very magical. It's very magical. It's almost like an addiction. It's absolutely an addiction. And because it resonates with you, you're doing something that is enjoyable on many levels, and it's helping you achieve um, your path in this world. And I think we all have to kind of find, you know, the main, the main question I hear from, so, from everybody is, what's my purpose? And is your purpose to be a musician? Is your purpose to be a doctor? Is your purpose to have a family? Um, I don't think any of those are purposes. I think 
those things will help you achieve your purpose, which is just to live and know yourself. You know, and it's through those acts, like through playing music or artwork or even uh, research, that we're rediscovering who we are. And I think that's what's happening on a very large scale now because of the internet. So, you know, um, everything is at um, basically we could look up anything, get anything we want, and it's right there in front of us. So, this is actually causing a huge mass awakening. Uh, over the past uh, 10, 15 years. And this is also what's causing this upshift of disasters. Because the more that we search, the more we have to look at uh, what's within us. And we have to release that and heal that. Um, if we don't, it's going to continue to be more and more chaotic. So, Jason, how do we begin? to stay grounded in a world full of just this ongoing trouble. How do we create a grounding situation, not only for the individual, but for the collective? Is, is there a certain technique or is these uh, ideas that you want to share with the audience about how we can actually begin to plant ourselves in our power? Well, first is not to bury our emotions. It is good to feel and understand uh, what's going on and what's happening. So, um, it's not all love and light, like I said. It's it's a polarity universe. So if something bad happens in our lives, um, we have to face them. You know, we can't just ignore these things because they're all lessons, they're all teachings. What I would say is the best thing to do is not be reactive. I think that's the most important thing. Everybody is so stressed that they're just guided by their emotions. They don't think anymore. So if they feel something, they react, and they could be reacting um, out of fear, out of anger, um, you know, without even thinking. Um, so what I would like to uh, tell people is we could feel these emotions, but we should feel them from an observer perspective. We should step out of it and we should breathe so we can actually make the right decisions going forward and not be reactive to the emotions. I don't know if you've ever experienced this before, but an emotion, it's almost like a, a message system. And it's something that is trying to communicate something to us. And I'll tell you a story. Um, when I was um, first starting to do healing work, you know, to be a healer, it's, it's almost like all you want to do is help somebody, right? That's, that's the only thing you want to do when you become a healer is just help. Yeah. Um, and so I was doing uh, work on uh, a young lady, and she calls me the next day very, very sick. <laughs> and she said that, you know, since the healing, this has happened to her. And it feels like someone just punched me in the stomach. Because, you know, you want to make someone feel better, not worse. So I was kind of sitting with this feeling for... A good week. I, I really couldn't eat or drink. I just felt this um, emotion bottled up in my stomach like I did something wrong, you know? And one night I was just having a conversation with myself in meditation, still feeling very sick. And it came to me that this person had to release this issue and it had to manifest this way at this point in their life or else. If it wasn't dealt with, it would be much worse later on in her life. And then when that clicked in my mind, it made sense to me mentally, but I still felt the emotion. I still felt sick. So I did a meditation. I went into the emotion and I thanked it for giving me that realization. I thanked it for making me feel that way because it pushed me into action. It pushed me into action. And when I did that, this thing exploded. It, literally, this emotion exploded and it went right up my spine. And I had this incredible Kundalini um, explosion. I went out into the universe and I was like, uh, it, it was the craziest feeling I've ever had in my life. And that was just for having a dialogue and conclusion with the emotional energy that was stored within me. So before we you know, go forward, we have to understand how the energy field works. We're basically an open energy system 
that as we're walking, we're just a big sponge. So we'll collect different things. We, we may even collect emotions and thoughts from other people around us, our family, our friends, our environments, and we accept it as our own emotions, our own thoughts. And so we can wake up in the morning and we can say, you know, why do I feel this way? And mentally we can say, it doesn't make any sense. I shouldn't be feeling this way, but we do feel it. So there's many methods to let it go. There's many methods of processing that energy. Um, the, uh, what was taught to me was through Qigong, which is an ancient Chinese system of moving energy through your body. And by doing that, you're opening yourself up to allow the energy to release and then pull in new universal energy. I find that's very, very important in strengthening. And uh, later, uh, I got into the Egyptian postures, which we could talk about a little more. But I think what we need to start doing is one of the most important things we have to start doing to ground ourselves is learn what our energy is and what our energy is not. I think that's the most important thing we need to learn is how do we separate? How do we separate? Uh, the energies that we're producing with our own thoughts and emotions, and what are we picking up from the person we're having a coffee with? You know, so we really have to find the separation. And then once we do that, we could consciously say, this is not mine, I don't accept it. Triple eight nine one nine two three five five. Triple eight nine one nine two three five five. I'm speaking today here in Center of Light Radio with Mr. Jason Quit. Jason, would you give out your contact information so our audience can find more about you and the light you are bringing through the world, sir? And uh, I would like to ask you after we get through that, um, how do we begin to do that very thing? How do we begin to recognize what belongs to me and what does not? Give us your contact information, sir. My contact, you can find me at thecrystalsun.com. That's thecrystalsun, S-U-N.com. You could also find my books on Amazon. You could also find my books on thecrystalsun.com. Just look up my name, Jason Quit, and that's the easiest way to find me. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. So, Jason, how does a person begin to go about the process or the unfoldment to discovering what energy actually belongs to them and what other energy is actually might be them being an empathic in that particular moment and realizing, hey, this doesn't belong to me? Because I know it, as you mentioned, it's very seemingly real. Uh, I did a psychic fair some years ago, a spiritual fair, and I walked away from someone's booth and boy, all of a sudden my hip was hurting and had a spiritual reader across the way, she motioned for me to come over and she goes, Keith, I saw, I saw that you went to this lady and everything was fine. And when you left this booth, um, you were limping. I said, yeah. She goes, I saw the whole thing unfold. She goes, it doesn't belong to you. But it was convincing to me that something in my body that belonged to me began to hurt. So how do we begin to separate the two? Well, again, you know, um, I'll tell you another quick story of how I figured this out. And, you know, I never knew I was an empath. I never knew that that was an actual ability, you know, because you just kind of feel like crap all the time. That's what an empath feels like. Yeah, right. 
You know, they just keep getting things, um, emotions, feelings, pains, and we think there's something wrong with us. So um, I was guided uh, by my guides, actually. To, they t- told me I had to practice Qigong. And I started to practice it for about a year, and I didn't feel anything. I didn't, you know, feel energy uh, at all. But I did it because I knew I had to. And uh, my mother, um, is a very nervous lady. She has this worry about her all the time. And when we would drive in the car, she's um, very nervous about driving. So if someone would cut her off, she'd immediately like swing her arm to the seat next to me and she'd lose her breath, you know? And I would lose my breath too. So it's like I would feel what she's feeling. So when she got scared, I got scared and I lost my breath over something so, you know, so stupid as just someone cutting you off. It's not the end of the world. And that was just my whole life. I always felt that. And I remember I was practicing Qigong for um, months and months and we're in the car and someone cut her off again and she went into a panic. And I looked at her and I'm like, I don't feel that. I don't feel that anymore. And I wasn't connected to her. That was my first real starting to sense that, wait a second, I don't feel that anymore. Did I do something to my energy where I'm not connected to hers anymore? So that was a real kind of shift in my awareness. And it has to, it has to start with some type of spiritual practice. It just doesn't come overnight. It, it, the first thing is understanding that it is possible that that is what's actually occurring as we're picking things up from other people. And then what we have to do is we have to strengthen our own energy. Because right now, our energy fields, um, they're being pulled in many, many directions. And because our energy is being pulled and manipulated constantly, um, we don't know who we really are. We've forgotten of where we came from, what our abilities are, um, our past lives. We've forgotten all this because our energy field is being pulled in so many different directions. So what we have to do is we have to meditate and just clear our minds and breathe and then do a spiritual exercise like the Qigong where we're pushing energy out, pulling energy in. And by doing this, we start to sensitize ourselves to our own energy field. It took me about a year where um, I can feel energy going between my hands. It felt like um, two magnets pushing each other. And then when I continued to practice, that energy, that feeling started to go up through my arms and then into my body. So I started to get a feeling of that's my energy going through my own body. And then I started to feel the energy outside of my body, like you're in a bubble. And when you go into different environments, you can feel how the environment is manipulating or affecting your energy field. And it's through that that we start to see, okay, when I go to uh, this shopping mall, I get these feelings and I feel sick. So then when I come home, I have to clear that energy off of me and get back to who I am. Think about it like this. You're a big sponge, and you get up every day, you shower, but you still have your energetic energies or toxins connected to you. You go to work, you go through your day, and more and more things happen to you, and you're adding to your sponge. All right, and then you go home at night, and you lay in bed, and you're taking all that energy from the day, and you're actually putting it in your bed with you. (laughs) And then you wake up and you go back to work, but in your bed, there's still that energy from the days before. So you start to get uh, restlessness, you start to feel sick, you start to feel fatigued and tired because you're not processing energy properly. It's It's not going through you, so you're just collecting it. It's almost like you're putting, every day you wake up, you put on a new winter coat. So Jason, you're saying that when a person begins a meditative practice, yeah. They begin to identify with their own signature vibration. And once you begin to know yourself and how it feels to be the authentic you, 
that whenever something comes into your field that is not, you immediately begin to feel the barrier b- barrier between you and said person who may be overlaying energy on you. Correct. Beautiful. Absolutely. And it's through that knowledge. So, uh, for example, I could be sitting across from a friend and I could start to feel what's going on in their body. So I start to read them or pick up what's happening to them. And I could either accept it as my own, and then it's stuck within me and I take it home with me. (laughs) That's one reality I can do. The next reality I could do is, as I'm speaking to that friend, I could recognize that this is an issue that this person is carrying. And this person is now projecting that wound that he's carrying to you because he needs help. But he's unaware of that help. So energetically, there's a communication happening. And then I could just be speaking to him normally, but in the back of my mind, I'm working and processing that energy, and suddenly I feel it released from me, and I know it's released from them. And I think that's where we all have to be. We have to be able to feel. And it is a feeling. You know, it's not like um, a voice in my mind saying, this person has this. It's never like that. It's always like you sit in front of somebody or even tune into them from a long distance, and then you can start to feel what's going on around them and inside of them. And once you feel it, then you could um, influence and process it. So the feeling comes first. Often, Jason, when I'm out in public and I tell, I share this story often, when I'm out in public and I'm intermingling with people because I just went on a band break and I meet someone for the first time, um, and as I'm using all my faculties, my, my, my ears, my eyes, my ability to take in, my intuition, just all of that stuff, I often send out a radar. And I, trust, I always trust what I get back, whether it's accurate or not. I trust mm-hmm. it as if it was the truth. And when I begin to dialogue with this person for the first time, I find a pendant, uh, the sound of their voice, a uh, piece of clothing they're wearing, physical attributes, something that's very, very beautiful. And I begin to massage and appreciate and admire that quality of that person. And I begin to hyperfix and hyperfocus. And I take that into a space of my heart of just truly just, just digging what I'm experiencing. And I literally see God or their, their own divinity walk out of themselves and t- it steps to the fore. And I see transformation happen in that person immediately. Is this sort of what you're saying um, is stepping back and stepping in and using your awareness from your heart space from versus the ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey mind space of judgment, right and wrong, and what you think is happening? That's exactly correct. And, you know, it's beautiful that you're doing this because, like you say, it's a feeling. You know, so you're 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 taking your attention and you're bringing it into your feeling, into your heart, and by doing this, you're allowing the process to unfold. And I think that's the most important word is allowing. Now, when we were when we were taught this um, in uh, the Algonquin shamanism, um, what they said is that when you become sensitive like this. People's energy will call on you, and you just allow the process to happen. For example, I could be riding a bus, and suddenly I'll feel that there's a connection to someone on the bus calling for help. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's, it's just almost automatic. And I can just sit with it and allow that process to unfold. And that person will receive whatever they're meant to receive. Yeah. Um, I don't go up to that person and say, this is what's happening. In fact, I won't even make eye contact. I just allow that on some higher level, there's an agreement that took place that at this time, this work would be done with this person. And I just let it go. But we all have this ability. It's, It's not something that a few of us have. It's something that we can work on and develop. And that's why we need things like spiritual practice. You know, how can, you know, the whole topic today is, you know, how can we be grounded in chaotic times? How can you be grounded if your mind is chattering? 
Right. Jason, one thing I say often yeah. about chattering, not only the chattering mind, because to me, the chattering mouth is the chattering mind. And I've always say incessant talking is not good for you at all. Jason and I are hanging out. Jason says, hey, Keith, how's your day today? And I said, man, I went to the store today and I bought some rice and I bought some tissue paper. And I turned on the second aisle. I could just say I went to the store. It frees up the entire process. And so when the incessant mind is going on, I was actually going to ask you this, Jason. We look out into the world. The average John Doe, the average Jane Doe sees all this chaos, all this terrorism, all this race baiting, all this stuff. How does one get out of the fight? That's something else I say all the time. Get out of the ongoing fight in your life, no matter what arena it's in. How does one take a new posture, a new position? It's just an unfoldment process. Everything is unfolding unto itself. What would you suggest um, to help a person begin to get out of the duality? Because we're not seeking duality. We're already here. We want wholeness. So what would you offer in support of someone to help them get out of the monkey mind of living in the world of chaos, terrorism, and racism? Don't get drawn into it. It's as simple as that. And, you know, there's so many modalities and things, but, you know, the basis of it is don't get your attention pulled. All right. So you are an energy producing being. You are light. You're broadcasting frequencies out into the multi universe, multi dimensions. Now, if someone comes to you and starts to draw you into something, Pull is, they're pulling your attention, which means they're pulling your energy. If someone is talking to you a mile a minute and trying to hold your attention on them, what they are doing is literally saying to you, my energy is being pulled so much that I need to pull your attention to me so I can be fed energetically. That's what they're doing. And if you allow that to occur, what you're doing is you're allowing yourself to open up to give the energy you're carrying to that person, cause, or thing. For example, you know, on um, even Hurricane um, Irma, you know, you know, how many people were watching the live 24-7 live stream of the event on TV? You know, millions of people were watching that and putting their fear, putting their, um, you know, putting their emotions into that TV, into that event. And the more people that do that will actually cr give more life to the situation. Because that's what you're doing. You're co-creating a reality. And if you're co-creating that reality with fear and anxiety, um, that's what you're planting into the world. It's funny you use that word plant, Jason. And again, another thing I always say passionately is we can water the weed or we can water the plant. And whatever one you give your attention to is the one that is going to blossom. And I understand people's intentions are fabulous. It's gorgeous. It's divine. Their intentions are, oh, my God, this horrible thing is happening. And I want to help by, you know, see what's going on. So I can continue to send prayer. But little do they realize they're adding to the conundrum of the problem. You know, I see people all the time, Jason, all the time. And I'm sure you see it as well. Um, post on social media. I just went to the doctor and we're not sure, but I think I might have this. And now we got everybody chiming in going, oh, my blessings to you, girl, or my, my friend. And, and everybody wants to help and everybody wants to support, but little do they realize you're supporting someone in said potential illness. Yes. And here's, here's another thing is that many people like the wound. Oh, yeah, it creates a great amount of attention. And they don't want to give it up. Exactly. So what they're doing is they're using the situation or the wound that they carry um, to pull more energy towards them because that's what they like. And it, it may not even be a conscious thing. It's just a subconscious thing that they're doing. Uh, they're not bad people at all. But when you're... Um, focusing your life around a specific thing, um, what you're doing, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, you're feeding it. And it will grow. So the best thing to do is not give your attention to things. 
that you do not want to manifest in your own personal reality. For example, if, if I start to feel a pain or a sickness come to me, immediately my mind will say, no, I don't accept this. This is not what I'm going to take on in my life right now. Dig that. And it's just gone. You know, so we have to learn not only how to stay grounded, but control what we're going to take into our reality. And I think that's how we, um, and I wouldn't use the word control, because we are being controlled in many levels. (laughs) I would just say we're choosing uh, our will. We're choosing our free will of how we're going to manifest our reality and experience our reality. And the more that we ground ourselves, the more that we release and know our true energy and what we feel like, then we really get this power um, to make those decisions. So remember, we have to talk about uh, karma and destiny. And, you know, we're just drawn and I don't want to say drawn, we're pulled in so many directions by the things that we carry, the way that we think, the way that we feel. We're being propelled down a path because of that. And we could have free choice along the way, but we're being pulled in a direction because of what we carry. So if we could let go of that, if we can let go of those things that are pulling us, then we can actually stay still in the present moment, take a breath and say, you know what? I want to go this direction. And then the universe will support you. Speaking here with Jason Quit today on Center of Light Radio, 888 Jason, let me ask you this. Would you agree with the idea that one way someone can become grounded and move back into the authentic nature of their power is to accept responsibility that, like it or not, conscious or not, I've done something somewhere, somehow that brought this hurricane, this mugger, this whatever into my life. Because when one accepts said karma and reflection, it takes on a new meaning, a a new disposition entirely by accepting such responsibility. You got the right word. It's acceptance. So it's also acceptance and blame. So what you're saying is, um, because I did this in my past, this is happening to me and I deserve it. And, you know, that is very, very common. That is the way the mind kind of goes. But it's not all cut and dry. It is not all black and white. We can actually accept our reality by creating this story is basically what you're saying because of this story that i've created in my past now i pay for it yeah guilt always looks for punishment (laughs) but what are they doing to step out of it is the question yeah yeah so instead of learning looking for ways to step out of it looking for ways of healing and closure and to um, release whatever is holding them in this pattern They're just taking that story and say, well, I'm this way because of this, so leave me be. I like it here. Don't bother me. (laughs) And I think a lot of people feel that way. So, Jason, as we continue to move down the timeline Mm -hmm. in our future, you being a multidimensional time traveler, have you experienced of course, anything's possible, and it de- probably depends on what platform you project yourself, not you, but anyone who does time traveling or out-of-body experience. The platform you launch yourself from is likely going to bring you to said experience. But when you found yourself in a space of being clear and wanting to move into a future paradigm, a future timeline, do you have any idea what is likely in this? I'm not asking this to pigeonhole us, but what is likely going to happen to us in the, re- ne- the near future about humanity's fate? Is this going to keep happening forever, or do we have have we mustered up the, what we needed to make the changes that necessary so we can begin to live in a united family? That is a very difficult question. Because the answer is very difficult for people to get. Um, I would personally say that 
this type of conflict, this type of chaos in our world is the reason for our awakening. Okay, it's, it's waking us up and it's teaching us like nothing else. <laughs> you know, I, as traumatic as what happened in Houston is, the beauty of unity that came out of is amazing. So I'm thinking if we begin to unite, there would be no cause for these natural calamities. It's all about unity. And it, these things are making us unify. Yes, we need to unify. And I was actually um, driving through South Carolina during that time where all that was going on uh, with the racism. You know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was Charleston, South yeah. Carolina. So I actually drove through there, um, going to my friend's place in North Carolina. And we were looking around and there was police everywhere. There's just police everywhere. And we're trying to figure out what's going on here. And then when you read the news and you realize what was going on there. But the, I came to this conclusion a long time ago is the reason we still hate is because we have to first hate ourselves. It just comes down to that. Right. And once you take that personal step to love yourself, you can't hate anybody. It's impossible because everything's a reflection of your love. So, you know, for people that are still divided, it's just because they're not connected. And because they're not connected, then you have forgiveness and compassion for them and you want to love them more to help them to unify and to bring them closer to what the truth is, which is the reconnection to the source creator, whatever you want to call it, which is in all of us. And there is no division. So we have to, the, I think the real answer out of all of this is we have to learn how to love ourselves first. It's a, it's a kind of crappy answer to someone who's uh, troubled, who's dealing with uh, self-issues. Uh, but we do have to look at the mirror and understand that we're all the same, we're all connected. And it's through that unification in chaos that will bring us together. Unfortunately, that's the way things are set up right now. I've seen it many times in my life, Jason, especially when I was growing up before I got on this path, that I was living with the mindset, um, no heart. I was living in the outside world and I was angry. And my world was just a reflection of all that inner stuff. And like you, um, we support people in making the choice to turn inward. And when you connect to your authentic self, you know, we thought our whole lives, this is what seeing is. Oh, I can see pretty good, right? When you do this, you go, oh my God, is this what seeing is? And we begin to be motivated to expand our awareness peripherally and expand our awareness. And next thing you know, we become, we have the ability to, to, to not only see, but understand, but to feel that there is no disconnection to anything. And when you live from that kind of space, boy, life gets really, really juicy. Jason, we're at the top of the hour. Sadly, it flies like that. Would you give us a final thought, um, something with our theme about how we can support people to not only become grounded, but to help ease the difficulty of swallowing the pill of the terrorism, the racism, the, the, the catastrophic events that are taking place in the world? What could you leave us with, sir, that would support them and uh, falling into their heart in easing into bliss a little easier. We have to talk to people with love. We really do. It's not a debate who's right and who's wrong. We just have to find ourselves, um, treat people the way we would treat ourselves. And, you know, I was having this conversation with a couple people and, you know, why can't we just be good people first? Right. Just be, just be a good person and talk to people because everybody, and I mean every single person you come in contact with, has problems. Every person is dealing with something. <laughs> okay? So if you come to them and you start to push their buttons or talk to them in a, in a way that will push their buttons, um, it's not going to work. You're going to cause... Um, disconnection to them. So if you come with that compassion and know that they're that way because of that inner conflict that they're holding, 
then the only thing you could do is talk to them out of love. And that's where we, we really have to start, is just being compassionate and know that everybody is dealing with something and we can't judge where they are in their life because we don't know where they've been and what they've gone through. What's coming down the pike for Jason Quit? Um, well, right now I am helping a good friend of mine, uh, John D'Souza. Uh, he's putting out a book called The Clear Hears, uh, which should be coming out next month. So I'm just helping him put that, uh, finalizing that together. And, um, you know, just continually traveling and, and teaching the Qigong, the Egyptian postures of power, um, and just being present with anybody that wants to talk to me. <laughs> Dig that, Jason. You're always a phenomenal guest on Center of Light Radio. Appreciate you coming back, brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Brother, that door is always open to you. Thank you again. Everyone, Jason Quit, one of my favorite people in the interview on Center of Light Radio. He, he's doing his thing, man, and he's doing it to the hilt. Check this out. Tonight's broadcast was um, stay, how to stay grounded in troubled times. Next week on Center of Light Radio, I have a very powerful lady. Her name is Scout Wilkins, and the title of her broadcast is Coincidence. Hmm. Achieving love and optimism in a crazy world. That's an alignment. You know, Keith, you kind of fishing. No, it's not. It's an alignment that we had these two shows back to back. Thank you again for being here, Center of Light Radio, every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And I always say this because it's very valuable. It's very important to not only you, but to everyone around you, to the world that you live in. When you lay down at night, you have nothing better to do. Breathe. Well, Keith, I breathe all the time. Breathe on purpose. Breathe consciously. Taste your breath as you in and out it. And after about 10 or 15 minutes of that, you'll find yourself through the ceiling of thought. And you will be in the ocean of profound, deafening silence. And watch what happens to your life when you implement this practice ongoingly. You will get out of the struggle. You will get out of the fight. You will always water the, the plant and not the weed. Peace, love, and light to you. I'll see you next week. Have a good evening.